The domestic season is over, that means transfers are going to take place and this transfer window is going to be crazy because it's shorter than ever. Things have got to be done before the start of the season. Toby Odeverald is the big talking point at the moment, Flav, yep. and it looks like Manchester United are the front runners for him. His contract is, is strange, it's odd, and it's leading to essentially a free-for-all for the top six sides, I think. But what do you think about his contract and the situation that... Uh, Spurs find themselves in. Well, here. the contract isn't that odd. It, uh, you, often the, the difference in it is that we got, had the option at the end of the five year contract to extend it by another year. So the proviso from out of Aero's team was that, okay, we can put that extension option in, but we want a clause in our contract that means that we can be sold for 25 million of a window period of about four weeks of the next transfer window. Uh, 2019 yeah. summer. So the, the, the point of us having this ex extension option in his contract is that his value doesn't diminish moving towards totally, the end of his contract. Yeah. It doesn't protect him from moving the club from the club. So what we've got is a situation is this summer we can sell him for upwards of 50, 50 mil mm -hmm. whereas next summer we have to sell him for 25. So that's why he's going this year. Alvaro has only played like 13 games this season. Yeah. Uh, part of that's down to injury. Part of it you wonder is down to Pochettino starting to move things forward like he did last year with Carl Walker and yeah. Trippier. This year, uh, Davison Sanchez has come in and done really, really well. Mm -hmm. So how big of a loss would it be to, to lose him when he's not actually played that many games this season? He, he got injured in October and it's not just a small part. He was out for five months and he wasn't available for five months and he never really returned. He played two league games and one league cup, uh, FA Cup game. Um, and that was only because we needed bodies in, in, inside. It, as a starter, it wasn't him. It was Sanchez and Vertonghen in the back four. Mm. How big of a loss is he? He's the best defender in the league, in my opinion. Well, it, that's what Daniel Levy's looking to sell upon that that phrase that is widely kind of understood and agreed with. I don't think it's, I mean, Virgil van Dijk maybe is someone who's getting to that point where people think he's the best centre-back in the Premier League, but... I think Levy wants to, well, and apparently from reports, it looks like he wants 75 million uh, to sell him this year. Because yeah. when he sees Virgil van Dijk going for that kind of money, he'd like to see the same amount. And Manchester United look like they need a, need a centre back. Yes, they do. And uh, van, van Dijk was younger, so he's got that on his side. 75 million seemed expensive to me then, but he has proved to be an excellent addition to Liverpool's side, and, and their form shows that in the second half of the season. Uh, and Alvaro, they're, they're comparable. You know, I, I think he's the, he's the best defender in the league with my Spurs hat on, but he's up there even even if I wasn't a Spurs fan. Um, consistently, he's been involved in the best defences in the league wherever he's gone. Even at Southampton, he had a great year uh, defensively. Yeah. So, you know, look, you can't deny how good he is and you can understand why teams like PSG, Man United are involved and, and, and involved in the discussion of signing him. Um, Pochettino didn't bring him back into the side because, as you say, it was about preparing, future-proofing the side, preparing for the future, preparing for a world where Alderweire doesn't, doesn't play for Tottenham. And he's done well. You know, our defence was pretty solid, more or less. Um, and we'll be finding new, a new replacement, ideally the lit of, of Ajax, who's only 18, but will cost 55 million if it comes off. For Man United uh, and Mourinho, I think he wants the finished article a lot of the time. He doesn't want to buy too young. That's why he's bought Sanchez. And I think with, with Aldevaro, the, the, the risk on their part is you buy a guy who's been injured for a little bit this season, like he should be fine, but he is 29, you're looking for success straight away. And also, you're not going to be able to sell him on. No, that's it. That, that's essentially it. If we signs a new contract at Spurs, his value drops. Um, and that's not the way Levy does business. It's frustrating. I want to win things now. In an ideal world, if Toby Aldevaro has to be sold, it would be PSG, someone like that, get him away from English football. Um, but if he does have to go to Man United, it, there is an option, or you, you, you think it might be more likely that we could bring in this guy here, uh, Martial. Um, they've already got Sanchez. He clearly is going to start ahead of him. He's played most of his football from the bench this you know, second half of this season, and he'd be a great signing for Spurs, certainly someone we're interested in. It wouldn't surprise me that if Alderweireld is allowed to go to Man United, there'll be some discussion about this player because he could sign, we could sell him to anybody. The, the, so if I said to you, you can, you can sell um, Alderweireld to PSG, yeah. or you can sell him to Man United, <coughs> sort of straight swap or not, you know, a tiny bit of money, um, probably you'd have, to, you'd have to give him a bit of money, wouldn't you? Or it'd be pretty close. It'd be interesting to see how that deal would work out. Yeah. Basically, you get Martial in <coughs> exchange. Which one of those two would you take? Sell him to PSG. 
You're still centre of the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, Man United have an incredible defence already. I think they were the best defence in the league. Second best last season. Second yeah, best, after Man City. Well, out of variable, guarantee it. Yeah. But, so look, I don't want to strengthen our rivals. It's a backward step in that respect. But it's about finance and about money. Um, but how much could this guy strengthen you? I'd rather him go to PSG. Okay. But if he's got to go to an English club, let it be Man United so we can get this guy in. That, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Two final bits of business when it comes to Spurs. Let's move on from Alderweireld and even Martial. This guy, <laughs> Da Bale. <laughs> Gareth Bale oh. back as he touches his face, daring to dream. Do you think this could happen? Is this nonsense? Or are you just enjoying this nice little bubble of Gareth Bale? I life? don't know. I don't know where I'm at with it, really. I, like, the kid in me, right, when we signed Klingsman, that kind of level, this is comparable to that. And the kid in me thinks, Oh, it'd be amazing, amazing. But the realistic kind of 36-year-old who's kind of a bit haggard by, by what's <laughs> happened in football over the last 20 years thinks I mean, probably... it's easy, lazy journalism probably or... better money spent elsewhere. I don't... Oh! I don't... I don't Do you I'll take him back Dave... in an instant. I don't know what it is. It's the, the romance of it. It'd be incredible. So the, the, the thing that you're slightly worried about when it comes to him is... I guess injuries and yep. huge amounts of money that you'll need to get him back. Yeah, so if, if he's even to come back, reportedly on £605,000 a week at Real Madrid. <laughs> so if he, if <laughs> Six, uh, I'll offer you 600 605 Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably more to satisfy agents and whatnot. But, yeah. you know, they, they... I don't know. I mean, he'd have, to, he'd have to drop his wages to one hundred grand a week. But he's probably got more money than he can ever spend. You know, he has huge deals with Adidas and the, mm-hmm. and the like. There'd be massive complications with that because he's an Adidas footballer and you know, we're sponsored by Nike now. So, you know, if we can work out all of those problems and somehow fix his body, he would, you know, we, we would be challengers. If, he, if a fit Gareth Bale he can play 38 games next year with Kane and Ali and Eriksen, I mean, probably that is a game up there with... I mean, that is, yeah, yeah. And what we've been missing, Spurs, for so long, we've got very, very good players but we haven't got the, these players that can turn the game against quality opposition just like that by a moment of brilliance. And he did it over and over again for Tottenham. Yeah. My only fear is that Spurs have moved on leaps and bounds since when we sold him. And are we buying back a better player than we already have in the squad? Now, I'm not saying that Son is better than Gareth Bale, I'm not. But I'm saying in terms of his value to Spurs, in terms of how... how how he can contribute in goals yeah, and assists. He, and he's durable. He <laughs> he's, doesn't get injured that often. Well, I'm just saying that, he's, that Ericsson and Kane are probably on a level with, with him. So it's a massive risk, but it's kind of like, well, what, are you, what are you in football for? If you don't want the, the romance of, of bringing back a former hero who essentially helped build what we've got now, to come back in the first game of the season in the brand new stadium, to light up White Hart Lane again. <laughs> face is I'll take the risk. I'll take the risk. Yeah, get him in if we can. Get him in. So the rumours are that Levy's doing everything he can to get him back. A, a weird little news outlet called Don Ballon said that this already done and dusted, that he's agreed terms. Um, others have said that, uh, you know, we, we're looking at it and Gareth Bale's open to it. So there's a lot of smoke, but it's all easy journalism as well. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited because I like the idea, but realistically, can, how can this transfer deal be done? There's so many obstacles. It feels odd, doesn't it, Flav? Kind of feeling up and glorious and happy. So let's just bring it down a second. Then Bele out the door, isn't he? Yep. He's had enough. Yep. Sick of you. I don't know if he's had enough. And mm-hmm. look, get Gareth Bale in, give him like all the money you've got, <laughs> and then you go, how are you going to get the ball to him? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, good point. Um, then Bele is, it looks like he's on his way out. Um, the idea, the thing that Spurs fans are talking about currently is the fact that, you know, he's, can his body cope? Um, he had purple patches in the most extreme this season, but he also had games where he was pretty average. So, look, he's been my favourite Spurs player for the last three years, but I absolutely adore him. He does things that most players can't. You know, I, I hold him up with Luka Modric, you know, Jack Mil- Wilshere, you know, um, the, the players that... that just control the tempo of the yeah, game yeah. and they're so rare. And people don't talk about Dembele that much, actually. Then you know, they concentrate on the player like Ericsson scoring screamers, Ali scoring goals, Kane scoring goals. But he really he just doesn't give the ball away. No, he doesn't. And he's so he... those kind of players make other players look good. That's what I say, and that's why I mean hate to mention him, but Jack Wilshire, you know, these they're they're rare. They come across, they control the game, they don't give up ball and it allows the other players in your team to commit because they know that nine times out of ten the ball's gonna end up at 
down their channel or, yeah, or yeah. into feed. So, and it's also been suggested that he wants a three-year deal and you can understand it, player is aging, needs a long, long-term long contract, last big earning for him, probably won't even get three, three years. So he needs that security. Spurs are never going to give him that. He still has some sell-on value. You know, if we get 15 million for him, that's value to a lot of Premier League clubs, though it's mooted that he's going to be going out to China. And he's, uh, well, yeah, because he's, uh, he's out of contract next season, isn't that's he? Right. So this is his final year. So I think they've almost... I think they've kind of un- understood that you're not really going to get much money for him because he obviously would have been 30, 31 at that stage. And so just mm. l- kind of let him go and get his final payday. So do you think he'll end up in, in China or do you think well, he'll stay in Europe? I, I think he should. I think he still has a lot to offer, but I think he would just clean up in China. It would be so easy for him. Like he's, he, he's, he's strong enough to, to shield off anyone now in the Premier League, in the toughest league in the world. Yeah. He would dominate in almost all of the other leagues apart from La Liga and maybe Bundesliga. Final question. This is just the start of the uh, transfer window for Spurs. Yeah. Uh, are you? Over, what's your main emotion? Optimism or bit of dread? Because uh, complete optimism. Right. Yeah, I think we'll do a good business. Um, you know, seventy million coming in for out of Erod is huge money. We can do a lot of good with that. We need we need to invest a little bit more as well. So whatever we recoup from player sales, you know, if it will be one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty million. We need to spend another hundred million on top of that if we want a chance of winning the league this ne- next year. Okay, uh, let us know your thoughts on Spurs and on Alderweire. Where do you think he should go? What would be best for him? And what do you think is going to happen to Spurs this summer? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Click that like button, subscribe, and check out all the lovely Wall Street content. One video of which is right here. <laughs>